Welcome to 221B Baker Street by way of the Southgate Bridge. I am your host, Zachary Hare, ever popular Sherlockian and obsessed fan of the great detective. And with me, as always, is everyone's favorite regular, irregular Karen Vera. Hi, Yes, we're a little behind, fans. We appreciate your patience. But as people forget sometimes, since we're not getting paid for this, we get a little behind with real life and such. (laughs) But we are going to do our best to catch up. So let's dive right in to Up to Heaven, Down to Hell. Yep. So this episode begins with, I think, one of the best series of um, cold open uh, sequences ever. I, I really cracked up and, you know, got ready for a good episode because it began mm-hmm. so well. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was the meat experiment. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, the, this uh, this banter between Joan and Sherlock, it's, you know, we've seen it many times before, but yet it's still not old. It's still amusing, funny. Hilarious and and uh, I can I can watch it all day actually as it should be with Holmes and Watson. <laughs> yes, and you know we got to learn about specific species of insects in certain parts of New York City are you know a little you know ecosystem all its own. So it's you know the Manhattan Ant I'm sure is something Sherlock would know about quite intimately. I've actually looked it up and it's real. <laughs> I. Totally real. I mean, that's one of the things I think the writers of Elementary are open about finding, you know, something that you would think would be totally bizarre, but it's all well researched and backed up. And and I had no doubt it was real. I, I love Johnny's delivery of it was so perfect. When he gives the whole thing about the Manhattan ant, and he just goes, he just, without even looking at her, and there was this great pause, and he just goes, I did not make that up. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you're thinking about lines of the week to, to share uh, for the podcast, and sometimes it's just, you know, the delivery of, of Johnny Lee Miller or sometimes um, uh, Lucy Lou. Just, you know, it's it, you wish you could recreate it for, for the line of the week because sometimes it's all just in the tonality of the voice and it's really sold and, and, and well well delivered. Indeed. And of course... When Watson goes to get food, she's like, he's like anything but, and she completes the sense pork. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> so that was just excellent. I mean, I wonder how, you know, when the writers come together in the room, you know, how are they going to decide to open the episode? And, and you know, they come up with things like this, and it's it's uh, a testament to how, how uh, the writers are really on their game uh, with the show. Yes, and so Watson goes rest. He runs into Gregson and his new girlfriend, which was she was mentioned before when Holmes. When Hol- yes. Now, interestingly enough, it's played by Virginia Madsen. Yep. So if you were alive in the eighties, Zach, and I don't think you were, I was born in the eighties. Uh, <laughs> so putting together Aiden Quinn and Virginia Madsen is like an eighties teen teen movie casting. You know, oh, what, oh life. I didn't realize it. What movie were they in together? Uh, I th- I think they they were just big names that came I, up I in the eighties. Were they? I thought they were. I thought they started to get recognized in the nineties. Uh no no no. Aiden, oh my god, Aiden Quinn is so hot stuff in the eighties. Really? Oh my god. I actually uh, did. I mean, yeah, I know. I know. The oldest Rex- movie I think I've seen with Aiden was Benny and June. No no. I mean, look it up. Uh, podcast. You know, Baker Street followers. Look for look for the movie Reckless with him and Daryl Hannah and and Aiden Quinn plays plays this hot stuff. You know, rebel high school person who wants to spirit the way, you know, the, the nice girl, Daryl Hannah. And he's playing up all his James Dean, um, James Dean effect for all it's worth. And it, he was a beautiful man back in the 80s. He's still beautiful now. Hey, you got to make sure to say that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but he was the, the, kind of way. And Virginia Madsen also was like, you know, the go to girl for a lot of these 80s comedies. And I think they played they played in several productions of things in the nineties beyond. Uh, I think they that's why they have a good rapport. But back in the eighties, these were the young, hot, hot up and comer actors, you know. So yeah, so there you well, go. The thing so I've it, always liked about so, Virginia Matt is she actually she was on the rise and then like her star really began the rise in the nineties, like really go up. But she took she took years off of Hollywood so she could raise her kids. Yes, uh, that's why she. I think. I'm going to bust out more obscure 80s movies called The Fire Within or something like that, where, again, she plays this girl from a Catholic school, and and Craig Sheffer, who I, you know, an actor you're familiar with, tries to, you know, from the wrong track, you know, 
ADP love and so then you guess that's uh, how long these uh, pros have been added and they're really good I mean they bring all that um, legacy and emotion uh, to their to their storyline is episode which we can discuss uh, as we as we just such an interesting choice of the captains I'm guessing that means you gotta if uh, I mean I don't know if the next he's gotten the green the outlet if it does I think he'll play a bigger part maybe and uh, so and one of the interesting things that Paige, which is Virginia character, Virginia Madsen's character's name. Paige asks when she meets Jonas, "Oh, what kind of doctor are you?" And you know, and Jonas says, says she's a surgeon. And at, at first glance, you th- might think that's just small talk, and like, "Oh, if you find somebody's a doctor, what's your specialty?" Oh, Without I didn't think question, about that. To the entire you know storyline that unfolds for for Gregson and Paige. So uh, yeah, I just realized that. I mean, we, we both rewatched the show just to make sure we have enough. You know, we have the right insights to share uh, for the podcast, and I, I realized her asking that question at the very start of the meeting with Joan, you know, is a clue to a big clue to what what is going mm. to be later on. Yes, and so after that, we have a man trying to get parking spot, and someone <laughs> steals it from him, and sadly, this man who steals his parking space gets some karmic payback. <laughs> yes, I mean, all that is part of cold open, so the stakeout. Um, the restaurant encounter, and then this, you know, where I guess where our mystery starts is again another fantastic beginning. Where yeah, it starts out with this, you know, dispute over parking space, which I'm sure we've endured and mo- many New Yorkers are familiar with. And bam, he he dies. And it was even interesting. I mean, the the guy who had the giraffe, the, the stuffed giraffe, the balloons. And, and the guy who he was having a dispute with, even that was like, I, you, your interest is, where was he going with the Yeah, I was just thinking the, that, like, the, if he's going to a birthday party, I really hope he wasn't the dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to a birthday party. Is he a new dad? Is he just a delivery guy? I mean, uh, that all gets sort of built into such a tiny... And how about, what was the other guy going to do? That's, he's like, all right, that's it. And then that's when the... So what was he going to do? <laughs> Was he like, you know, the Pulp Fiction guy getting something out of his trunk or right. getting a gun or getting his... I don't know. Even that is, is um, you know, that sh- elementary has earned that kind of intrigue in a few short moments of the opening scene to get us sort of like thinking deeper and finding out more from us uh, uh, such a brief scene. So uh, it's, it's times like this, uh, you know, you're, I'm glad I'm such a fan of the show. Yes. So for, we're, we're, at, we're at the... First, we get a little... Back and forth with Watson, and she, she explains why he didn't tell tell her about what she, how she really loved because uh, apparently she was a uh, the page she was sucked into kind of like a dirty cop situation. She left the force because of it, and um and she also broke up with Gregson because well this the, the idea is of the time is that she's protecting his career because she, she doesn't want him seen with a someone who like had so much bad. But, Baggage yes, with them on the right. fourth. Uh, and it, it was, it seemed like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, it was a good cover up, I have to say. What the, the cover up we'll, we'll talk about later, but um, yeah, it, mm. it seemed like a perfectly logical reason why, you know, Paige, Virginia Madsen would be protective and, and want to protect Gregson from that kind of association. So it, of course, Gregson is bothered because I think he was starting to like Virginia Madsen. They were talking about, you know, if you go to this town in Italy, maybe I'll take you there someday and get this look from Paige, which, you know, turns out to have, you know, talking about the future is also an issue with her because of the reasons that's going to be shared at the end of the episode. So, so yeah, so Lucy Lou gets the lowdown um, on on uh, why it, uh, Gregson was so kind of secretive about uh, him telling Paige that she was just a doctor and not a consulting executive. Right. So, yeah. So for there we get to go to the morgue, and we get Sherlock. Uh, first he finds the tooth. Yes. So mm-hmm. we see. I forgot the name of the uh, that coroner. You know, we don't know. I I, 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 yeah, no, I forgot to write it down. But yes, he's all the one. And so Sherlock, who's investigation deducing the two corpses, he realizes that this woman could have done what she, she had to have been yeah. helped. Had he gets cited, it's hilarious. <laughs> When he said, when he said, when he says, think of it, she's not just a murder victim, she's a murder weapon. He's like almost yes. giddy as he's walking out of the into the elevator. Yeah, uh, I I had the same thought. This was, you know, the finest moments of elementary. It's Sherlock is just 
you know, what he has found out and, and learned. And he's not arrogant about his knowledge. He wants people to learn and know. And, and a balance is struck always, always beautifully by Johnny Lee Miller. It, it does a fantastic scene. So Belle and Watson are investigating the apartment of the old lady, trying to trying to figure out what's the clue. Then they realize a one of our threats never. There's no way she yes. moved the uh, ottoman, but they with leather they can figure out when it was moved. Yeah. But now I found something interesting here. Obviously, it was to now Belle's mother has arthritis, so he knew right away these don't look like the right pills. But Watson had been there. Yeah. She she would have been like, oh, these are blah blah yeah. blah blah. You know, it's like so. I, I mean, I wonder. Why they chose to do that? Uh, well, I guess you know it's it's either a conceit of the show that they wanted some delay in the discovery. I'm sure, um, which you need sometimes to do within the confines of the TV show, mm-hmm. or that uh, the assumption is that Joan is checking up on Gregson, so it's Bell and and Johnny D. Miller. I mean, sorry, Sherlock were checking out the the murder scene, and and later on, I mean, it comes back a little bit when. When Joan would quit looking at um, more documents about building regulations and, and like, why don't you go? I'm tired of this zoning, you know, crap that I have to read over and over again. So it's 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 Belle and and Cheryl again. Who go. I guess that's that's another uh, uh, mystery, perhaps, like, it's not how you divide the labor now that one is getting up to speed to the detected um, skills. So yeah, they, obviously they're splitting a lot of functions, and I don't know how they decide to do it. Um, but yes, that's a little. Either a gap in the story, a cheat in the story, or you know, they we have no we have yet to find out how they divide the, the labor. So, okay. Yeah, so do the investigations, they track down the woman's son and I like how she, she's like nice name about how he got caught out caught out of the will. Yeah. And and he's pretty much by his own talking proving why. <laughs> He's like, oh, hey, I visit her every week. I brought her She says, oh, I earned that money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, uh, that's that's a, also a again well layered scene where you know this guy might have been you know admitting to the killing. Then no, I earned that money. And uh, in fact, him admitting that he you know switching the pills was um, motive for him not to kill his mother because of the hearing that was coming up and if she had died sooner than expected, uh, that that will, as it stands, would, would push through and true enough, that's what happened. So, yeah, again, that's, uh, and yeah, again, this is a show all about, I think, Sherlock being super Sherlock-ish <laughs> this whole episode because all his discoveries and all his little light bulb moments are, you know, well telegraphed and, and, and you know, you can see the eyes of Johnny Lemur just spark up every time he, he gets to unveil another, you know, insight. So that's that's a well uh, that's a well played scene, and it also leads to discovery of who actually stands to inherit from the will because you know Graham has died, Mrs. Graham has died, and it turns out to be yes, and yes, and and from the show, it's a staple of the show, and I love when they do this. It's like the son is scum, but not the scum they're looking for. <laughs> It happens all the time. They'll have a guy's alibi. He was doing a different crime at the yes. time. <laughs> You're right. This is a pattern. And it's it's darkly funny each time. I mean, you know, it, this is we're dealing with people dying in a tragedy, but at the same time, it, it's hilarious. <laughs> so turns out the, the, in, uh, the person who stands in Herod, or the, the, the quote-unquote person, turns out to be Mrs. Graham's best friend or man's best friend, <laughs> Eustacia Vi. Which right away is like a reference to uh, a Thomas Hardy character. Are you familiar with Thomas Hardy, the novel? Um, yeah. So this is from Return of the Native, and you know she plays this enigmatic female character. And of course, she would name the dog Eustacia Vi because she again is in the middle of you know a tug of you know people who want things from her, and she's merely a dog. <laughs> so I guess it's uh, yeah. it's another. And what was the name of the dog? I, could, I kept trying to rewatch it. Eustacia Vi. I wonder if that means anything. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Eustacia Vi. Uh, I don't know, but Eustacia Vi, like I said, is that character from Thomas Hardy's. Oh, that is the character. Oh, okay. So, oh, it's a, they, a, the dog oh, that is the character. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, they leave it all to the dog. And it turns I like the scene with her lawyer. Like, she was a tough old broad. And that's what I liked about her. Let me tell you something. If, if, um, if all I had to do with an apartment like that, in New York with take care of the dog, I'd accept it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would do, I mean, you know, it was the 
probably the best apartment in the in the building because she owned the building. So and I would ha- happily take care of that dog if I meant you know uh, being a secretary in a you know what I. Uh, and I'm pretty sure after the dog dies, he'd get whatever's left yes. over. <laughs> Yep, indeed. Or at least the, you know, keep the the dog living as long as possible. You as long as you can. But the sequel episode, Dog Fall. You know what? Day. I wouldn't have been past the writing team to come off about Sherlock, which is, com- is coming within the next few episodes about uh, mysterious dogs in Sherlock's life. Mm, I saw that. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, and so from the, the the lawyer says he didn't have motive to kill her either because he actually and he mentions Leona Hemsley yes. if and people remember that horrible woman um her family fought over her and so i forget the name of the case but there was also a case like that similar that actually inspired about a hundred years ago that actually inspired a charles dickens book where um a family fought because of a mistake in the will the family fought like the generations fought over the money and by the time they settle it the money was gone so he he was trying he the lawyer says he has no more because he tried to convince her to give it to the kids because he knew the legal fees would kind of negate the the settlement So his motive, he has no motive, and he doesn't want to take care of the dog either. He's moving. He didn't lost so run from a dog there, in daycare, okay. <laughs> right. From there, Watson meets Paige, and she confronts her, but she says the reason she wants to protect him, but she knew something else was up, but she doesn't know what. Yes, yeah, so that's it was a short scene, but that's pretty much what happens. So from there, Watson meets Sherlock, and I love that. I love how that. I loved his explanation of air yes. rights. <laughs> it's a little set up. I'm like, I'm like, when I saw the. Draws like that. I'm like, why do they like that? Yes. Uh, but it turns out to be Sherlock is very purposeful and, and it's all to educate us about air rights. And I'm sure, which I'm sure again is a real thing. And, uh, oh yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. Cause you yeah. got, you got to think of, um, like when they're building it, like, cause you know, you build a skyscraper, a certain point, it's going to block the yes. sun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it, it's up, it's also has a lot of burden on, you know, uh, uh, the, the sewage systems, water systems, you know, once it, a bigger building can suck up all that and the low, the, the, the houses at, at lower level will have to, you know, that's why there's zoning and all that. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's to prevent um, cities looking like the fifth element or blame. Runner. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, yeah, we see, we see the, which leads us to um, the developer of a certain building from that, uh, from that area, because her- Sherlock has found a new motive. I, he says that several times in um, this episode. I find a new motive for this crime that's going to reshape the way we think about this story. And uh, yeah, so they end up going to the developer William Hull, which I don't remember uh, him appearing before, but he, he gets mentioned in the. In- he he was in the episode with the map. Yes, uh, I, I was secretly in discovery. Oh, it's the map. But I didn't remember his face exactly. But well, he, he was he, he was only in I believe the one scene. That might be why he you don't remember. But I love how when Sherlock is in the middle, he, he we actually get a little shot against his father, going got it, got it, <laughs> want it. <laughs> and to tell you, when I saw the building, my first thought was that thing's gonna fall yep. over. You know what? You uh you have insight into why you know certain. Uh, illegal acts happen because the structure of that building looks pretty, uh, uh, you know, not exactly structurally sound. So. It looks like something you'd build in the city as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so you could blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's why the Sherlock has that priceless line, you know, straight lines hurt you as a child. Um, right. <laughs> about that design of the building. Yep. So we meet William Hall again, we meet the architect. Who's played by Malcolm mm-hmm. Getz uh, from? Yes. I know him from Caroline in the City. I don't know if you remember that show where he played this kind of like goofy romantic lead, and I had he looks so different from that from that time. So oh, I, I did I did watch it, but I haven't. I, I watched it a lot. I remember Caroline Ray and the guy who played her best friend in it. Yep, and you know what he he you know, he had this blondish hair. He had his glasses. He was supposed to be the romantic lead. That's wait a minute. That's not the other guy in the show. Is Caroline it? in the City. Yeah, there was there was her and her friend. They worked yeah, that, together. Yeah, that's just they, didn't they end up together? Her, Caroline and and My, like I said, I haven't watched that show since it was on the air. So. But they were the unrequited, look, you know. Rem- because if that's him, he looks. Com- you're right. He looks completely yep, different. he looks totally different. I mean, I guess he's a uh, that good a uh, chameleon for an actor. Well, it's been a while. That show was like <laughs> what, fifteen, twenty. No, my God, shucks. 
I'm gonna look it up. For a bit. <laughs> no, because I, I used to watch that show a lot. But but yeah, yeah. and um, they talk about the era and like so her de- de- and I, I love the. I mean, it, it almost gets confusing. Yes, it, it does. Um, you, if you, I wish that we had a wall of crazy this episode to you know map out you know what connected to what which, but. Uh, sadly, no. In the uh, in the wall of crazy count, there's zero for this episode. Normally, Sherlock likes to have one, but he does one later in the episode. And it's just two posters, but that's not enough wall of crazy for us to. Oh, you're right. It is him. He looks so different. <laughs> I can't know because his hair was so high back. Like, yes. I, can't, I like if and the, like you said, yeah, if you hadn't told me, never would have recognized him in a million nope. years. But they, t- and I love how, and we find out that this is relevant. He just happened to forget. He's like, oh yeah, someone tried to threaten us once. Slipped my mind. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's within the realm of that kind of disc- You know, I guess people get threats all the time, and they don't think much of it. And you know, I guess that's a clue for Sherlock. Now, every time somebody, a character dismisses a threat, look into that threat even more. <laughs> Something right. Different. So they're t- they're telling about the people that so they from like he tells us a list of people that might have tried to stop it. So from there they go to the Save the West Side people who are packing up and they're thinking, oh, okay, this is a clue. But then they're all sh- they're surprised. They're like, wait, yeah. what are you talking about? They're not. They're making a story. Like and I love when she goes, you mean we won? <laughs> yes, that was well done. You mean we won? And and it yeah, it turns out the man in charge was murdered. Which they even though it was a burger, they're like that can't be a coincidence. Yes. Um, yeah, and, uh, and, you know, it, it becomes even a bit more complicated because the guy was murdered, uh, and it was a conflicting motive to why the Mrs. Graham would be murdered, and so that's why there's no unifying theory that Sherlock is, 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 uh, trying to sort out that would make both crimes seem connected to the building. So that's, that's one of the, the new, this is a new direction of the mystery that we have to sort out now. Yes, so... They, the, I mean, the murder on the surface looks like a remote robbery, but they, they, they still want to look into it. But they're, tr- they're trying to think, I mean, because it doesn't make any sense for the way that, that the, the, like, it because it actually would help them. So they're trying to figure out what, so Watson gets her, looks through all the paperwork, and she's not happy. But it, it's kind of good that they show that because, you know, a lot of detective show procedures, it shows how, like, it just, it's easy, but it's not, you have to, it's not, be doing stakeouts, going through data, it takes, yeah. I mean, if they actually showed what it took to be a detective, it'd be, I mean, it would, there would be some excitement, but it would also be a really boring, exactly. long show. Exactly. I, to that point that you just made, this is why I think I've said it before, that they, this Sherlock, version of Sherlock and Watson, we show the, the drudge work, the, the, you know, the, the pounding the pavement, stuff that they do to, to find some connections in the case. You know, how many times have you seen them looking at documents all night? And as a result, we get Sherlock waking up Joan uh, in a nice thematic uh, thing that they're going to have going for the show. So I, I really, I, they've struck about to show how detective work involves a lot of labor. At the same time, if you have the right insight and, and uh, deductive skills, you, you can solve something that's, from all appearances, seem unsolvable. Unsolvable, but yeah, yeah exactly. It, detecting work is a lot of hard work, and they they take pains to show it on elementary a lot. So I I really that all that makes me admire this version version of Sherlock even more because that's how smart and hardworking he is at at being great. So so well done, show for the last four years. Yes, yes, and we see we get the clue of the Italian shoe. Yes. Which leads them, like, there's no, there's no way a common criminal will be wearing that. So which leads them back to, what is it, Busque? Busque, yes. Busque, yes. And again, he says, oh yeah, someone did. We found a mole, and like, and but again, like, you can, you can tell something suspicious. Because yeah. the mole was giving internal documents back to Derek, because that's another breakthrough they had in the case, right? That Derek had, um, from the combing through many documents, uh, Joan sees that. Derek had a copy of the internal uh, environmental study that the company did. So um, that's how they, you know, sort of like go back to the architect and say. Well, what's great is if, and it shows right in the same scene, if Joan hadn't gone through that paperwork, they wouldn't have yeah, found that. Exactly. Code. So it turned out the, assist, the assistant of Bousquet who was feeding this document to Derek. But um, it, and, again, and again, it seems like, hey, you know, sure, I had a leak and, I fired a guy, so so what, right? So that again, something we have to de- 
dig deeper into that kind of uh, discussion from Bousquet. Yes, and from then we get a scene page in Gregson's, and that's the reason, the real reason she broke up him had diagnosed with MS, which it is true, and I know some people have had it. Too, yes. It's it's a horrible disease. It's like you're, I mean, and it's un, it's not like it, it's so unpredictable because you could live, you could be fine and just have slight problems, or it could just destroy you that's, in a year. There is no exactly way to know. That's exactly how it happens. You know, sometimes you're in remission and you're good, and sometimes it's just, you know, all of a sudden the progress is really devastating. Exactly how you said it. it's really going to be tough, and and Paige says, you know, we're not that long into our history yet, so you know, she wanted to, um, you know, give Gregson an out, right? Mm. So I can hear the hounds of the Baskervilles coming to you. <laughs> Sorry, that's my neighbor. <laughs> hounds will be featured in an upcoming podcast, listeners. <laughs> yes, and um, so from uh, yeah, and obviously we know Greg's the type of guy who would step up, but she's she's not letting him. So that's where that scene ends. Yes, and from there we get Sherlock um, bringing a bunch of plans and stuff, yes. which some of which he attained legally. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. Because he has a friend, quote unquote, friend in the Department of Buildings, so I guess it's another layer that you know. You know. Oh, I, I hate when I hate when time. I know, I know. I know. I know. Uh, knowing the writing team, they'll find they'll bring him to a center for story, maybe in an upcoming episode. But yes, and like like you said earlier, you know Sherlock is super gleeful when he has when he's excited. It's fun to watch, and he go, gets on to explain to Joan, you know, how he found the motive that unites. Um, yes, by breaking in. But what's <laughs> I mean, the interesting fact that he finds through that is that they had plans for the new building, but there's no way they could have completed that yes. in the time frame. So, so. It, from there, they can that. So it, the, the, we, they originally thought that the woman was killed to prevent yes. the building, and then the other the other man was killed to ensure. But it was actually different levels yes. of it, and because it, we find out that what really happened was. Bousquet's building design, which anyone who has eyes could see, was crap. Yep. <laughs> and um, it looks like it's made of Legos. Yes. But, like, literally a breeze could have just... Yes. So, so he, he, yeah, he killed the woman to inch, so they could build it, yeah. but shorter and a code. Yep. He killed the woman so they would tie up the air rides. He wanted to have an excuse for, for shortening the building. And he, he killed Derek, uh... To, so he would not have to reveal that he made wrong calculations in his building and lose all the uh, the other high profile jobs he was supposedly getting because of this building. So uh, you know, it's truly a, you know uh, the try that led people that led this architect to or, or, his, or his income. You know, he, I guess he was trying to protect his and reputation. Yes. So oh, and still, um, right. still valid in these days. Well, um, and also, yeah, and he killed the other man because of the, because it would have shown that he already knew, like it would have shown he already knew it was yeah. found, and then it also probably would have led to. So of course they can't use this information. So they call Holland, and I love the scene where it's like, hey, um, you can, we obtained this through not so legal means, but if you just give them to us because you own them, we can catch this guy, and make you look fantastic. And yeah. the man is a pol- essentially a politician, so yeah. he without oh, very yeah. easily sells it. Him out. And you know, are you seeing any sort of forcing property developer running for office? Ha ha. No, please don't mention the uh, the name that you just mentioned. But it's a rerun to the times. And it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but he doesn't seem as insane. So. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but oh. yeah, but no, I mean, I mean, Hull doesn't seem as insane. But um, yes, they and so they catch him. Now that's where the case ends. Now. We get the scene with Greg, and it's a great really shows Aiden Quinn's acting shots where he oh he wants to be with her. He, he doesn't care. And I like how even Watson says you you've already decided like you're gonna be. And it's it's a strong because per- some people talk about, but it should be like we, none of uh, we've all thought that are any of us strong enough to stay with someone who their body is just gonna shut down, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we all we all say yeah we would, but we really don't know if we could. I I totally agree. Yeah, it, it's something that. You know, if you confront it, can you really have the, I guess, the inner strength to to carry on something that's so difficult? And yeah, on the stress, you can say yeah, of course. But when it reality hits you, it's gonna be a tough. Day. So um, the thing is, the writers never—it's what I've said so many times—they never put anything in the show that's not relevant. So I, I mean, I gotta—I can't wait to see where the, they, they're going somewhere. Yes, and you don't cast Virginia Madsen hopefully just for one shot. Um, uh, you wouldn't no, not at all. I mean, Virginia Batson. <laughs> so I mean, 
Yeah, so that's where the episode ends with that. So it's weird that it ends with that and not – it ends with the secondary character's resolution and not the case or Sherlock or or anything with the father. Yeah, yeah so uh, that is that is um, a different way to end the episode. But it felt complete. Um, so – and it was wonderfully acted and it was a treat for us to see Aiden Quinn, you know, uh, just break our hearts basically. So uh, yeah. well done. Well done show. All right, so – before we get to final thoughts, I'll do my favorite lines. Uh, absence of mystery does not mean there is nothing to learn. That was exactly what I wrote down, too. <laughs> yes, I love that line. That's really good. And number two, straight did straight lines hurt you a child? Oh, yep. Uh, I totally had that and stood down to it. That's a... <laughs> And you know, you, and I, I wish I had an audio gif of of, of, sure, of Johnny Lee Miller just delivering that because the that line plus his facial expression was just, you know never get not funny for me. So yes, those two were also my my really uh, best lines of the episode. Yes. Um, okay, so for my final thoughts, I'll just say that it was a good episode. I mean, it's, it's obviously a standalone because it didn't connect to the overreaching over over story, but it was, a, it was a good case, and it was interesting how the murders aren't for the reason you think it is, and it still fit with the reveal. And I'm yes. intrigued by the addition of um, Gregson's girlfriend and what they're doing with her so i'm curious to see where they're going with that but really i just want to move past this and get to the other episodes because i gotta know what happens with the father but overall good standalone episode and i enjoyed it yes yeah so i um just to add to the uh, the two lines that also had an effect on me and decided but it wasn't the funny lines one was um gregson saying when he when he first talks to jonah about page he says it's nice having someone again and the way Aiden Quinn says that line was like, you know, you know, you felt the full force of, of um, his years of, you know, what kind of um, romantic person he's been and what kind of romantic past he's had. So, again, that was wonderfully delivered. And the other, the other really emotional line that I liked um, was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I don't know. I think that's the only one that I wanted to share. And the other funny line that I also wanted to add was about there was a discussion of Bell and Sherlock about the smell of old people and why that is. And of course, Sherlock yeah. was the reason why it smell <laughs> have that old people smell. It's the same as stale beer, apparently. Um, of course, Sherlock would know this. But final thoughts: I know the show Elementary is the balance between a, a, a running storyline, which this season is Moreland. And at the same time, uh, independent mysteries that, that need to sort of, for lack of a better term, fill the gaps in the longer storylines. And and for some people, you know, the filler episodes are well filler. But I think um, Elementary's creative team take great effort to make these quote-unquote filler episodes. I'm, I'm really going to find a newer term for that. But well, filler alone. episodes. Yeah, standalone. Thanks. Thanks. Standalone. Then make the standalone episodes seem have enough weight, contribute something to the longer character development of the show, uh, in the show, and and it's it's um it's I think it's uh, episodes like these that show how strong the writing team of the of the sh- of Elementary is because they need to you know find funny things about air rights and and um, other obscure potentially. You know, re- but yet it's actual in, in reality, Manhattan and all that. So, uh, so it was really uh, an enjoyable hour, and I'm just, I'm just worried that because this is, you know, we're definitely into the back half of the season, and I'm getting a bit impatient about where Moreland um, started going. So I hope that gets addressed uh, sooner, and we get that big sort of like, uh, you know, the price of. of Introducing Marlon gets fulfilled soon, so it's a bit frustrating. I understand, but this episode again was, uh, you know, a good display of Sherlock and mastery of, of, you know, how detecting is hard work. Yet you need to be brilliant at it. And hard work won't do it alone. So uh, that's up to heaven and down to hell. So I believe that now all for this episode. We're gonna do our best to catch up. And we'll try to get these out to you, our listeners, if my, and we love you listeners. But for now, it's time for us to part. For the game is afoot. <laughs>